The Project Japan. Hi, I'm Yuka Sato. Urbanization has given rise to various problems around the world. In particular, in many countries in Southeast Asia, the heavy concentration of people in cities has led to chronic traffic congestion and air pollution. What's more, natural disasters such as flooding have also shown the vulnerability of urban centers. Japan has also dealt with many of the same problems, which it has addressed with its own unique solutions. Today, we'll be exploring hints from Japan to overcoming the many problems arising from urbanization. Japan has continued to develop its urban infrastructure with a focus on three pillars. The first is the eco city, the second is TOD, which stands for transit oriented development, the third is disaster resilient city planning. An eco-city is designed to use energy efficiently and fully consider its environmental impact. One example of this is the city of Kitakyushu, where they introduced the Takakura composting method. The city worked together with researchers to find a way to create and promote an efficient system for composting food wastes. The city of Kitakyushu has been working hard on the recycling of resources, and in the 16 years since 2003, they have been able to decrease the amount of garbage processed to under 70%. What's more, the city suffered from serious water and air pollution in the 1960s. Through efforts to reduce contaminants by setting up related facilities and overhauling factory production processes, Atmospheric dust and soot decreased to a quarter of previous levels, restoring local greenery and clear skies. TOD refers to urban development and development along railway lines that encourages the use of public transport, rather than a reliance on cars. Tsukuba, which is roughly 55 kilometers away from Tokyo, was a town with a population of less than 100,000 up to the 1970s. Following TOD, the population has currently doubled to approximately 230,000 and has become a model for countryside revitalization. City planning resilient to disasters, resilient cities, is a particular strength for Japan. This is a public soccer stadium in the capital region. Beneath this, there is a facility for dealing with major flooding. It releases water from rivers that might flood underground, which serves to proactively stop flooding. This is a hazard map portal site that the government manages. You can search by place name and find the risk of disaster displayed for regions, categorized by disaster type such as flooding or landslides. And now, as the country enters what's being called economic maturity. It faces new issues such as the shrinking, aging, and declining population. To address those issues, cities are now being redeveloped, encouraged by bold regulatory reforms. The aim is to leverage the experience, technologies, and know how cultivated in solving such urbanization problems to build smart cities utilizing digital technologies. We spoke to some key people involved in the effort to learn more about this grand vision. Japan's smart cities are being implemented with the aim of improving people's well being and societal sustainability. The policy has three main points. The first is to create smart cities that look at things from the viewpoint of the citizens, to create smart cities that are user oriented. The second point Focuses on vision and challenges. Specifically, this is about how various data coordination and technology is going to be utilized to realize this vision and solve societal challenges. The third point is the enhancement of coordination between different fields. This is an initiative to solve challenges that until now had no solutions by having wide scale coordination between multiple fields and even between different regions. One example of where the viewpoint of the citizens is being focused on is the city of Aizu Wakamatsu in Fukushima Prefecture. 
Aizu Wakamatsu is a city bursting with nature that's roughly 300 kilometers from Tokyo. It's known for its many claims to fame, which include Tsuruga Castle, hot springs, and Japanese sake. In February of 2013, it started a project named Smart City Aizu Wakamatsu, which had ICT as one of its central pillars. Over 95% of citizens are aware of our smart city initiatives, and after continuing these for 10 years, the citizens now have a high level of regard for the smart city project here in Aizu Wakamatsu. This application is one service that is provided for residents. It displays all kinds of lifestyle information, including disaster prevention, medical, and educational information. Residents particularly like the Josetsu Navi, snow removal navigation function of this app. It informs people where vehicles that specialize in clearing fallen snow are currently operating. Since it is difficult to travel through areas where snow hasn't been cleared, this information is important to citizens. When activated, the app displays the location of snow plows based on the user's current location. This customization of information is a characteristic of Aizu Wakamatsu's services. Snow can add a lot of pressure to the lives of inhabitants. So I think we're approaching a better living environment. These kinds of applications and systems are being developed by companies that Aizu Wakamatsu has attracted from both inside and outside of the city and their base of operations is Smart City Iked. At present, a diverse mix of 37 companies ranging from major corporations to local ventures make up Smart City Iked, which was founded with the goal of regional and community revitalization. In Aizu Wakamatsu, these kinds of businesses are working with the city to create foundations for managing big data and are now using such foundations to build various applications and services. One of these attempts involves distribution. At this company, a system to directly connect users and farmers is being developed to enable users to be able to have vegetables delivered through cashless payments using public transportation. The city is also working with local universities. It's beefing up human resource development in IT by providing lessons at high schools and holding classes for citizens. We want to assist with the cultivation of talent in the community, too. We're aiming for the realization of a society in which citizens are connected via a relationship of mutual trust by utilizing digital technology. This will enable the creation of a cycle in which data provided by citizens based on an opt-in system is used to provide personalized services. Next, we have the city of Takamatsu in Kagawa Prefecture. In Takamatsu, they have collected data on roads, weather, and river levels and tide levels in order to create an application that allows citizens to track status updates in real time during times of disaster and extreme circumstances. By sharing information with neighboring cities, they're aiming to help prevent disasters across a wide area and reduce financial impacts. In the town of Sakai, located in Ibaraki Prefecture, there is a free autonomous bus that regularly circles important locations such as the hospital and post office. The aim is for this service to function as a replacement for private automobiles. In the Kashiwa no Ha Smart City, in Chiba Prefecture, a range of initiatives have begun, such as AI analysis of diagnostic information to quantify risk of disease and allowing patients to open a consultation with their doctor online. The thing that all these initiatives have in common is their aim for citizens' well-being. To achieve this, each initiative carries out efficient use and application of big data and AI that's shared throughout the region. Finally, they use this foundation to implement systems that meet the needs of each local area, which revolve around elements such as healthcare, transportation, and safety. Such projects are currently being implemented in over 200 locations across Japan. We're implementing technology that allows us to create smart city features for citizens to use in their daily lives. So this means we can build towns that are extremely well suited for their residents. I think this may be something unique that Japan is doing. 
When it comes to well-being, it's important to envision things like citizen happiness and the ease of living that a town offers. This is why we set KPIs for well-being and ease of living, which align with the individuality of a particular town's local government. We will continue to strengthen these KPIs. It's this kind of smart city building style that is really progressing throughout Japan right now. Improvements to infrastructure will also have to take place, but eventually there will be a need for digitalization. I think this model, in which the well-being of citizens is gradually improved in a dispersed fashion, will become hugely important for Asia and ASEAN countries in the future. Japan's expertise in smart cities is also being shared with other countries. The Japanese government is working together with the ASEAN Smart City Network, ASCN, to hold high-level assemblies, as well as working with the Japan Association for Smart Cities in ASEAN, JASCA. The Japanese government is continuing in the push towards cooperation for the realization of smart cities in the ASEAN countries that participate in the ASCN. In order to support the formation of smart cities in ASEAN countries, the Japanese government is implementing various support measures, known as Smart Jamp. Specifically, there are four main pillars to this, which are the following. Implementation of research for the purpose of concrete planning. Securing project funding and financing limits from public institutions. Thorough support from workers at the Embassy of Japan. Provision of information on Japan's cities, businesses, and technology via the homepage. For example, in Cambodia's Batambang, we've drawn up a master plan that aims towards efficient waste disposal for improving the townscape, increased attraction as a tourist spot, and industrial development that utilizes transport hubs. Also, in Vietnam's Hanoi, we're trialing an on-demand transport service that aims to reduce chronic traffic congestion by efficiently running an AI-integrated rideshare bus that connects homes to the train station. In addition, we're carrying out practical trials in Indonesia, Singapore, and Vietnam for infrastructure maintenance and management utilizing AI-based image processing technologies. Specifically, it involves a dedicated app on a smartphone that's equipped in a regular car, and just by driving, it can detect road damage. This makes inspections and data management extremely inexpensive and efficient. We hope that we can contribute greatly to the formation of smart cities in ASEAN countries through these kinds of initiatives. Japan is involved in the development of many smart cities in Asia. The surrounding area of the Bangsu Station in Thailand is an example of such undertaking. The project was started in 2016 by Thailand's government and will be completed in 2030. JICA and Urban Renaissance Agency of Japan drew up the business proposals for this project. We asked Singapore's public administration official about ASEAN's infrastructure needs and his view of Japan's partnership. Climate change poses an increasingly severe burden on cities. Safeguarding the climate resilience of cities is key for continued economic and social development. The growth potential for sustainable infrastructure is centered on emerging markets and are expected to account for most of the projected infrastructure spending by 2050, primarily through greenfield projects. We help bridge demand side partners in Southeast Asia and South Asia with the most suitable partners from our networks to catalyze projects. Third country partners like Japan often have solutions that help to complement the Singapore ecosystem. We are working hard with MLIT to investigate how the private sector can leverage on each other's complementary strengths and venture into third party markets to promote quality infrastructure, for example, in energy efficiency projects for the built environment sector. Japan is working towards solving the various urbanization problems also faced by countries around the world through the development of smart cities aimed at realizing the well-being of residents. And it's hoped that by Japan sharing that experience and technology with ASEAN member countries, mutual cooperation can be forged to realize even smarter smart cities. I'm Yuka Sato, reporting from Japan.